tales for dark nights. The following performance is a second round entry in the 2017 Evil Idol voice acting competition. Voting is simple. Following the performance, simply click the thumbs up icon on this video if you'd like them to become a member of the team, or the thumbs down if you'd rather they not. Voting on this entry will conclude one week after the date of its posting. Good luck to all of our contestants. When I was 15, I found a well in the woods behind my house. We had already lived in that house for a few years by the time I found it, and I was surprised that I had never run across it before. It was made of cold, gray stone and jutted about three feet out of the ground. The top had been covered with boards. Dead leaves framed its base and coated the boards almost like a camouflage. I marked the location in my mind, making a mental map. I figured it might be cool to find my way back there at some point to read or draw. It was a really peaceful spot. It was summer, and I was kind of a loner with little to do. Most of the time, a peaceful spot to be alone was all I wanted. It took me a year before I found the well again. I could swear that I had mapped the path back to it in my head perfectly. It wasn't like it was far away from my backyard, maybe a mile into the woods if that. I spent most of the rest of that summer looking for it. I would walk the tree line for hours, back and forth. I didn't even care about using it as a spot to hang out anymore. I just wanted to prove to myself I wasn't crazy. I asked my parents if they had ever seen it during times they would go for walks out there. They just shook their heads and told me that they didn't know anything about a well. After a while, I just gave up. It wasn't really worth the wasted energy, after all. I figured it was out there somewhere. Perhaps I would just been deeper than I thought the day I found it. Time passed. Another school year came and went, and I had a birthday during that time. Turned 16. Started driving, found a girlfriend at school, and went about my life as normal. The next summer, I found myself bored on a day that my parents had both cars, and decided maybe I should take a walk into the woods. I hadn't actually done it for a while, and besides, by that point, I had started smoking and wanted to keep it as far away from the house as possible to hide it from my parents. About 45 minutes into my walk, I found it. The well. It was in the exact spot I had originally mapped out in my head and long since forgotten. Right there, where I would have expected it to be a year earlier. Still cold, gray stone, still boarded up, still covered in dead leaves. I did a double take on it, honestly wondering how I could have not found it when I was looking for it, but just kind of stumbled across it when I wasn't. I leaned up against one of the trees about four yards from it and stared at it, totally baffled. I tried to shrug it off, but it was so weird. I pulled out a cigarette and stood smoking and tracing the well with my eyes as if it were some kind of alien species. That's when I first heard the whistling. It was soft and low. At first I had to strain a bit to even hear it. I looked around the tree line to see if I could spot anyone else walking around the property. Maybe my mom or dad had come home at some point and were taking a stroll through the trees just like me. I didn't see anyone though. No distant shapes, no figures wandering the tree line. I followed the direction of the sound with my ears as it started to get louder. I even recognized the tune. Mary had a little lamb. It got louder and louder till it seemed like the source should be right near me, and soon I realized that it was. It was coming from inside the well. I walked over to the well and started to clear the boards off the top. They weren't fastened to the top by anything, so it was as simple as just picking them up and tossing them into the grass. Once the last board was cleared, I stared down into the black pit. A foul stench rose up from below, like wet and rotting vegetation. I trained my ear back toward the whistling once again, just to be sure I wasn't crazy. Sure enough, it was echoing off the stone walls of the well before it reached my ears. Hello? I called down. Are you okay? The whistling stopped. It just 
cut off at the sound of my voice. It was followed by a long and empty silence. It made me feel gradually more uncomfortable with each passing second. I swallowed hard and called out again. Is somebody down there? I yelled. My question was once again answered with only silence. Or am I going crazy? I said under my breath as I leaned up from the hole and took a drag off my cigarette. Suddenly, sharp and manic laughter exploded from deep within the well. I nearly stumbled backward from my surprise. I quickly stuck my face back down into the top of the well and yelled with all I had, Who's down there? Another long pause. I felt like I was standing on the precipice of hell. The stench of rot grew ever stronger in my nose. I had to choke down each breath I took. The silence was broken by what sounded like a low whimper and then a voice. A voice that sounded exactly like my mother. Honey, is that you? She said. Please, you have to help me. I think my legs are broken. My mother had left for work that morning. I watched her drive away. She had called the house before I went out on my walk, in fact, asking if there was anything special I wanted her to pick up from the store on the way home. Whatever was talking to me was not my mother. That much I knew for sure. The imitation was perfect, though. I stood above that well, staring down into the blackness. I was stunned and unsure how to respond to what I had just heard. Then, up from below, came another voice. My father's voice. Is that how you treat your mother? He screamed, ignoring her pleas for help. You have always been such a rotten little shit. Should have smothered you in your crib or fed you to the dogs when you were a baby. I felt sick. Obviously, whatever was down there was trying to mess with my head. As crazy as it seemed, that was the only explanation. Still, even knowing that, hearing those words in my father's voice hit me very hard. I backed away from the well. Oh, God! It screamed again in my mother's voice. Help me, please! The rats! The rats are eating me! Its screams for help dissolved into a high-pitched squeal and then died out in a gurgling, retching noise. I turned from the well entirely and began to run away from it, back the way I came and toward my house. I could hear whatever was down there in the well behind me, laughing. <laughs> as I moved through the woods as fast as my feet would carry me, I could still hear it whistling. Long when I should have been out of earshot, I continued to hear it. It whistled, Mary had a little lamb, just like when I had first heard it. But as I reached the edge of the forest, the tune changed to a funeral march. I sprinted to my back door, which I had thankfully left unlocked before I left. I got inside quickly and locked it behind me. I went into my room on the second floor of the house and stared out my window. It overlooked the backyard and had a clear view of the woods beyond. Nothing was chasing me, at least not that I could see. Still, I sat at that window until my parents got home from work. I thought about telling them about what I had heard from the bottom of the well, but I knew they wouldn't have believed me. I ended up keeping it to myself. I never went into those woods again, and every time my parents would go for their walks, I'd always tell them to be careful. I knew there wasn't much else I could do. What was I supposed to say? If you run across a well out there, book it, Mom and Dad. That shit is evil. Yeah, I'm sure that would have gone over real well, like me in therapy for a few years well. They never did see it, though. Or if they did, they never mentioned it. Months later, I started hearing someone whistle the funeral march outside my window every night for a week. Every time, I'd look to see what was there. I could never see anything, though. This happened every few months, and when it did, it would drive me crazy. I wouldn't be able to sleep at all. I would just sit up in my bed and listen in terror, helpless to do anything about it. My parents never heard it. Eventually, I moved away from my parents' place out to California. I got a job in the Bay Area working at some tech company, met myself a nice girl, even got married. For a while, I even forgot about the well. That is until I went on a nature hike with my wife a few weeks ago. We were just walking along in the woods, talking and having a nice weekend with each other. We followed a trail that led us into a clearing, and I froze in my tracks when I saw it. A well, sticking about three feet out of the ground covered in dead leaves. The boards had been removed from the top and scattered about the base, exactly as I had left it. 
My wife had noticed I had stopped walking with her and turned to me with a puzzled look. What the hell is wrong with you? You look like you've seen a ghost, she said smiling, walking back toward me. Do you see it? I said pointing a finger toward the well. She turned her head and then turned back to me with a raised eyebrow. The well? She said. Yeah, I see it. So what? I wanted to tell myself that it was a different well. It had to be, right? I hadn't seen it in over ten years, and I was in a different fucking state. I knew, though, just by looking at it, that it was the exact same fucking well. I found it again. I found it because I had stopped looking for it. I grabbed my wife by the wrist and started walking the other way. What the hell are you doing? She said as I drug her along. Let's get out of here, I said, and then, realizing just how weird I was being, made a quick excuse. I'm really starting to not feel good. Okay, she said, still sounding puzzled, but placing a comforting hand on my shoulder. About halfway back down the trail, I heard whistling. The same tune I heard the first time I looked down that damn well. I looked back behind me, half expecting to see some nightmare bearing down on me like something out of a horror movie. Instead, I just saw my wife. Whistling Mary had a little lamb, and smiling as she walked. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, don't forget to cast your vote for this contestant via either a thumbs up or thumbs down vote. New entries will be posted throughout July. Be sure to tune in and vote for each of them and help decide who becomes the next evil idol. In the meantime, turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.